much bigger. It's time for the Jedi to end. That's our word, brought to you by Action Point, my personal The Last Jedi. And I'm here with <laughs> Jeremy Hi- uh, Vanu Linger? I, I never remember your name. Uh, <laughs> of Abolition Abstraction and Seeds of Liberty. And I'm Jim Jesus, of course. Uh, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm just doing lovely, Jim. How are you? <laughs> I, I, it sounds like you're doing a whole lot better now. I am. I am. Is this the last time we spoke? Um, wow. Well, I've had some bad crap happen to me, but um, today I'm in a much better place, so we'll, we'll, we'll take that and run with it. Yeah, and you're, <laughs> you're, you're living the real anarchist lifestyle living in your car, so. Yes, today is, actually, it's Friday now, so today is day nine that I've been out here on my vehicle, so. Yep. It's been uh, a fun few days. We should get into that, because the last portion I really want to get into some, like, I really want to work out this, like, this, this, th- this idea topics. that I've been having for <laughs> the longest time, whether or not. It's true, and it's really kind of libertarian theory-ish. But we should talk about the the fun stuff first, which is you living in a van down by the river, which it seems as though like a lot of lawmakers are starting to do that now. <laughs> yeah, MK Lords. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm just biting off Nick, man. Yeah, he, uh, yeah MK Lords. <laughs> she's traveling around the country. Oh, I, oh uh, that's right. I forgot MK was. Yeah, and then I guess Ben Stone is somewhat a Lulbert. Even though he's been on once, and he's pretty much retired from podcasting. But I just like uh, eventually I'll have you back on someday when you're feeling a little bit better or something. And of course, he's always been uh, solving mysteries in, in, in his van with his wife. <laughs> uh, then you have Nick, who lives in a van, literally lives in a van down by the river, growing mushrooms, and then uh, <laughs> and 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 raising yaks, of course. Um. Oh. And then you have Seamus, who's uh, like keeps crisscrossing across the country, trying to trying to learn how to be poor. Um, but the, he's not living in a van or learn how car. to be poor. It doesn't yeah. take that much. Well, you know, if, 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 if where, where does he live? I think he, he pretty much lives in like Shermer, Illinois, <laughs> like uh, you know the the fictional city that all the John Hughes movies st- take place in. Oh yes, yes. Uh, and, um is there anyone else bab is mia who knows where he's at um <laughs> yeah I, I i haven't seen i haven't seen much well i haven't been paying attention to social media that much but i haven't seen much from babby in a while yeah the only time i ever see him but is he's on always facebook traveling. and i'm never on facebook so i'm uh, mm-hmm. always uh super jealous of him yeah and again, like he's always tra- traveling across the country with his family uh he's always on like an endless road trip um Jeez, I think that's about yeah. it. I think that might be about it. So yeah, uh, and then I'm moving, so I'm. De- <laughs> so there's that. I guess that's sort of the same thing, um, but that's not going to be for a couple months. But so yeah, so how how is living in your car the true anarchist lifestyle? Which, by the way, I, uh, I have done for a few days, like moving across country. Sometimes I'd be like, oh, I guess I could just crash in my car. My op- my yeah. my move in date isn't um, for another couple days. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's I mean it's been interesting, man. I uh, I mean I, I talked a lot of, about this before I actually did it, and I kept saying that I was gonna go into this rather unprepared, and then of course because it's my life, all all the all the shit hit the fan right before I finally closed on the house, so I was completely unprepared. Like I literally just had the stuff thrown in the car, and it's like, all right, murder dog, we're going. <laughs> and uh, we're going to we're, we're going to figure this out as we go. And uh, like, I didn't even have a location where I was going to sleep the first night. I was just going to drive around and find a spot. Mm-hmm. And 
you know, so it's it's just it's been an adjustment. She uh, Mur- murder dog probably took it harder than I did because she was a little. Uh, I mean, she's happy to be with me because she's always happy to be like right next to me at all times. But um, you know, she was she was definitely off for a few days because she wasn't eating, and then she uh, she had some stomach issues because uh, you know she was going to the bathroom a lot more often than she normally oh. did, and uh, which is always mess. great in a van. Yeah, well, luckily she doesn't do it in the van, and uh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, 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 just just you know, whenever she had to go, it was like a lot more, you know, it was just it was a mess. So, um, but she seems to be writing herself now, and yeah, I I got. Uh, luckily I have a, a friend who lives close by who I hadn't spoken to in a while, but, and I forgot that she's like super big into camping and stuff. So she found out that I was doing this and she reached out to me and she's like, I've got all these supplies. If you need anything, I'm not using it. Uh, so like she hooked me up with like the coolest little camp stove I've ever seen. This thing is like tiny. It weighs 25 grams, like less than an ounce. And it fits in this tiny little drawstring bag and you just, oh, you know, nice. take it out, flip it open, twit, you know, screw it onto a, one of those little propane tanks and boom, you've got yourself a little stove. Propane and that thing and... has been a lifesaver for me. <laughs> propane and propane accessories. Yeah, man, yeah. it's good stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's been fun. I, I mean, I like I said, I, I, I kind of just I kind of just wung it and ran out the door. And, uh, and of course, every you're couple using of days that, I've been you're using that outside, right? Propane. Oh, of course. Okay. Just well, I, sure. I, I, no, no. I actually, <laughs> I actually recorded a video. I recorded a video of me testing it out um, the other day because I have a bunch of people that are, po- are apparently following my travels here. I've, I've, I've come across a whole bunch of other people already who, who have been doing this full time for years, and uh, they've all like made their way over to my different channels and stuff, and they've been, uh, they've been uh, connecting with me and uh, commenting and stuff. And uh, they, I kept getting requests because I kept, you know, I, tr- I said I was going to do a daily vlog while I was out here. Um, number one, just so I had content um, and, you know, try to make a little money off of Steam it or whatever. And also just to kind of have like a routine because I know me like I can just hang out and do absolutely nothing all day and like, you know, smoke a bowl and get high and be yeah. like, ah, whatever. But I function a lot better if I have at least some kind of structure. So I knew I needed a routine. So I said, I'll do these videos. And then I got a bunch of requests. They're like, hey, these are great. But can you like do some outside shots and show us some of the stuff you got going on? (laughs) So I made I made this video with the camping stove. Unfortunately, for some stupid reason, I happened to be on Amazon right like literally right before I started recording the video. And I I I ended up on the page for this camping stove because I had looked it up earlier because I was trying to make a. a link for it so I could put it in the show notes and I just I happened to catch the the top review and it was this picture it was a bunch of pictures of this thing in pieces and then it was this long story about this how this thing exploded on this guy so I'm like literally about to record this video and I'm like Jesus Christ I'm gonna die <laughs> I'm like this is how I'm gonna go I'm gonna blow myself up in a part in a in a, in a in a county parking lot for some park with a propane tank and uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was I was a little worried, but luckily I did not blow up. And uh, the thing works pretty damn well. I, I was for like it only costs like seventeen bucks, so like seventeen bucks, and this thing can fit in your pocket. It's uh, well worth the investment, even if you just like to camp every once in a while. Sounds like a good deal. So, but a lot of times so yeah. when pe- when people post that stuff, like, oh, it's terrible. I'm it just going to keep it on me. Chances are, yeah. this because keep- they f- they fucked it up when they put it together, <laughs> or they did something horribly wrong. Yeah. Yeah, you keep breaking up. I have no idea what you're saying over there. <laughs> anyways, it don't, it don't matter. <laughs> it's all bullshit. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, yeah. This is gonna be it. This is gonna be it. We're just gonna keep. Each of us will just talk, and we'll we'll pretend we know what the other one's saying. Right. Um. <laughs> well, you know that's that's me in a nutshell. Anyway. Hmm. Yeah. Nothing. My connection apparently is my 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 connection is apparently crap because I I hear like a I'll hear like a burst of words from you and then all of a sudden you'll disappear. <laughs> well, it's interesting because I don't hear that out for you. You actually sound fine. Oh yeah, it, like I said, it's it's my connection. I, unfortunately, I don't think the wireless card in my uh, laptop is the greatest, and uh, which is interesting because I'm trying to I don't even know where where I am. I'm pilfering somebody's. Um. You're not breaking up on my Wi-Fi, end, at least. I try. I'm, I'm trying. Okay. Anyway. Well, now you broke up. Now that I mention it. <laughs> Once I actually say it, then you start breaking up. Damn it. Anyway. I don't know. Maybe maybe we should type back and forth to one another. 
Yeah, and we'll, then uh, we'll and then talk about it. We'll <laughs> and pretend we actually heard. <laughs> So how are you doing? Send. <laughs> Anyways, um yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. You were uh, before we started recording, I could hear you a lot better and of course now that we're recording, uh you just you keep like I, I watched a little voice connected thing go from like perfectly green to red. And then it's just Yep, it's Murphy's law. Yeah. Yep. Even though uh even though it says I have great signal, I don't freaking know. Yeah. Anyway. Wow. So, um, to, to so, finish up what I was saying before. Yeah. So that's, I mean, like I said, I, I've just been learning every day out here. So, you know, it's fun. I, uh, living the dream. Oh, yeah. We got sirens and everything. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so. I have had this theory, and and interrupt me if I start interrupting, or if it gets interrupted by my bandwidth and you're not hearing me. So this thing has been like stuck in my crawl for the last for a while now, where uh, people are making this um, argument that Hoppe makes about the public roads, which apparently I thought was Chase Rachel's, because I didn't I didn't think Hoppe would say something this stupid, but apparently he did. Um, and uh, the the basically the argument is you know if if you're hello. a net taxpayer, well hello, are you interrupting me because you can't hear me? Well, I, I heard you talk about the next net taxpayer. Yeah, sure. Okay, <laughs> what about it? So the the they don't you know, exist. Yeah. If, well, that's what I think. So what, yeah, what, what he said was uh, if you're a net taxpayer, then you should have like a like a like a share of the road once the state goes away, right? Yeah, that's the argument. Yeah, and that and that uh, uh, you know, of course, once once the state goes away and everybody has their share and they're a net taxpayer, uh, they're not going to want the uh, immigrants to come on the road be just because reasons. Um, yes. Uh, and in a holla, and I'll I'll try to remember to, to post this in the in, in the uh, description. But in a holla, who was a YouTuber on uh YouTube uh, he was an handicapped YouTuber for a while. Um, he ended up like disappearing, but I guess now he's back. He ended up making a really good video about kind of refuting this idea. Um, but I was and I was thinking like, well, are there really net taxpayers considering, you know, um, one, you know, first you have people who were like, you know, people who would they would be would call um, net consumers, right? Which we would normally yep. assume people who take. Welfare, Medicaid, or maybe not Medicaid, but you know, Social Security, disability, WIC, all this, all these other programs that the state provides. Those are the people that they're really concerned about all the time. But they don't kind of consider the consider things like you know, well, not just infrastructure, but all the other things that the local, state, and federal governments dump into the economy uh, it, via services and spending uh, that you are a consumer of, whether you like it or not. And chances are you're probably not paying your quote unquote fair share of that, no matter how you divvy it up, be it like, you know, one person, one dollar or, you know, per income or whatever. I don't think it's even possible to be. Well, I guess it's possible, but I don't think it's I don't think anybody is a net taxpayer at the end of the day. If you're consuming the services of the military protection, quote unquote, I'm, I don't think it's good. I'm not saying it's good, uh, but, but you know, you are consuming it, right? You know, they dump yeah. billions of dollars into to military overseas actions, um, you know, domestic spying, policing, drug war, all this other stuff that you're paying for. And you're receiving the benefits of those services, but, you know, blowback and uh, black markets uh, <laughs> and gangs and all this other stuff. Um, is it really possible to be a net taxpayer? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, ever since this argument was first brought to me by, you know, of course, my co-host of the Seeds of Liberty, who both, well, now there's four of us, but but two of them really think this is a great fucking idea. And every time I've had this conversation with them, my question is, who qualifies as a net taxpayer? And in talking with them and then talking with anybody else that I bothered to have this conversation with before I just gave up and didn't want to have it anymore, um, it always came down to the same things. And most of them, including my friend Andre, would, would like, and I, I don't even think they, they realized that they were saying it 
because they would say things like, well, yeah, you know, in order to become a net, because I'm like, define net tax payer for me. I mean, I, obviously I knew what they were trying to get at, but I was like, define it for me. And every one of them who ever tried to define it to, to me always said the same type of thing. It was always, you know, uh, you, 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 you pay in more than the benefits you take out. And right away, my first thing was always like, so you're admitting there's benefits to this, right? Like, you know, like, are, aren't you screwing your argument right there? They, of course, didn't want to touch that one. You know, my next thing would be to point out, well, OK, let's assume for the let's assume for the sake of argument that there is such a thing as this net taxpayer. Do any of us actually qualify? And they would all say no. And I'm like, then why are we having this stupid fucking argument if none of us are actually net taxpayer? Like they even admit most of them, the honest ones will admit that they're not net taxpayers because you're right. Um, you do. I mean, I, I figured this out. I mean, I, I mean, I knew this anyway, but like I've run across this just being out on the road. The uh, the one place that we've stayed more often than not is uh, one of the local county parks because normally they shut them down at night, but this one has a marina, so it's open 24-7 because people can come and take their boats out whenever they want. But, you know, I've been making use of this place, and they've dumped a lot of money in there, you know. I mean, hell, even the dog park now has AstroTurf in it. Um <laughs> But, yeah, there's all these little things that most, like, the people who make these arguments, like you said, they don't take into consideration that you're literally benefiting from so many, like, there's so many little stupid things that you don't even realize. And this, of course, is not me advocating for government in any way, shape, or form or right, saying right. that I approve of this type of behavior. But there are. There's things you don't even realize that you just, you, so if 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 the argument, like I said, every single person I've talked to about this who ha who takes this position, they all seem to say the same thing that, you know, it's a bet, you know, what you what you pay in versus the benefits you receive. I'm like, so we're already admitting there's benefits. So we all know there's benefits. And if none of us are, then this is a this is a, this is this is absolutely an exercise in futility. This is nothing but mental masturbation because none of us qualify like at, I'm poss like the only thing the only people maybe possibly would be like the corporate the corporations i don't even know if that's true considering all well, yeah the, exactly because con consider all of the benefits that they kind of get being a corporation right they get um well i guess you know corporations would exist under uh you know any kind of any form of anarchy i mean limited liability you, just because the government goes away doesn't mean limited liability goes away that would be insane to be like oh i invested in a corporation now i'm responsible for all their misdeeds that'd be insane <laughs> no one would ever invest in a company um but, you know, oh, yeah. considering that, you know, they get, um, you know, special perks, they get reg you know, regulatory hurdles that prevent competition for them, um, you know, all of their infrastructure when they when they decide to go off seas, like the government will, you know, protect them, you know, take take, for example, like all the oil companies and everything uh, when they drill sure. overseas um, or deep water horizons and stuff, you know, they they get to like, like with the BP oil spill, you know. The government is the one that, you know, protected them in the beginning, and then they're the ones that kind of protected them when they fucked up. Um, the government fucked up on that one, too. That's a whole other thing. Anyways, um, so, like, they get all these protections, and and then on top of that, they get all these, like, loopholes. I remember the, these stories used to come out all the time, like, Google basically paid zero dollars in taxes for, you know, the fiscal year of this year. This is outrageous. They should pay their fair share. Um, and then you have all these personal income tax loopholes that they that they're able to pay out because they can it or um and then you have these, these like a lot of the really super wealthy people a lot of their money they get from you know investing in stocks and bonds and um and all that stuff and you don't have to pay income tax on that one you're paying um what is it, the 15 percent what is it called um god damn it <laughs> we um I remember Bill Clinton tried to raise this for a while and it burned him. And so he ended up having to reduce it again. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Um, but yeah, you don't pay income tax on that. You just pay a 15% uh, tax on, 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 Oh, corporate or is it corporate gains? I think it's called. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that might, yeah, I think that might something be something like that. Something gains uh, tax. And so, you, you know, that's, that's not that much considering corporate corporate taxes can be anywhere from 20 to 20 to 30 percent depending on where you're at and then not only that but all these services that you get provided for right the state doesn't get enough money in to pay for all that service so they ended up borrowing trillions of dollars from the federal reserve 
So yeah, I, I mean, it doesn't make. I don't. I don't think it's even possible, considering that they're overspending on all your services anyway. Hmm. Well, yeah. I, well, see, I, I hadn't even thought it through that much. Um, and I, you know, and now listening. Well, from what I could heard, what I, what I actually heard you say. Um, uh, the uh, no, I, I, you got a good point. They, like I said, originally when I made the argument against this, I said maybe. Like those were the only ones I could possibly think of just because the amount they allegedly pay in, you know, but yeah, when you take all that stuff into consideration, yeah, that there may not be a single net tax taxpayer under the current system. Yeah. Unless you get one of those people who, who purposefully overspend on their taxes, you know, people that go yeah. to the IRS website and like, Oh, you can spend more money on your taxes. I don't know. I don't think there really yeah. are. I mean, I guess it's theoretically possible for a billionaire to go like, I'm going to spend the rest of my money paying my fair share and, <laughs> you know, what I what I get back in social services. But that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, yeah, but, you know, and on top of that, you can you could save a whole bunch of money on your taxes by giving to private charities, which, again, like, sure, that's that's great. I think that's better than giving your money to the state. But yeah, if well. we're talking about the next if, if it's if it's a good to be a net taxpayer. Uh, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's, that would be a bad thing to give to charity, right? If you're going to deduct it on, on taxes. Hmm. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> I, so yeah, like, well, and then on top of that, like, so let's just say that that's not all true and that rich people do pay the, the you know, the, the majority of taxes, like a lot of super wealthy people are like Democrats, um, like a lot of them. I think Bill Gates is a Democrat. Uh, Warren Buffett is a Democrat. All the celebrities in Hollywood are Democrats. And if they're going to be the ones with the shares to all the public roads, what do you think they're going to vote for? It's not to, yeah. ki it's not to kick out the Mexicans. <laughs> I guarantee you that. It's not going to be no. kick out the Mexicans. Well, the same same thing with the uh, even like I mean, like I said, if, if we're putting all the other stuff to the side and saying that's not, you know what 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 you laid out isn't true, then even if you look at the corporations, you know, same thing. They they don't want to get rid of the Mexicans. They use them for labor. <laughs> There's no way in hell they're stopping that, you know. So, I mean, I, I I always thought the the argument that these a lot of these people and I was, I was about to say idiots and then I stopped myself. But I mean, no, they are idiots. Even if some of them are my friends, they're idiots. Um, I mean, I never thought any of them made sense, but this one in particular, I just don't get because I mean, you've, you've laid out more of the, uh, the actual, like the facts, like what actually happens here as far as like benefits goes than any one of them that I've talked to has, because like I said, every time I ask what qualifies as benefits and how, like, how do you determine that? And, uh, and also, like I, I, I love to fuck with them because most of them are the, uh, you know, are all and or they fancy themselves and caps and whatnot. And I'm like, well, uh, then uh, aren't you just uh, shooting yourself in the foot repeatedly? And they, like, they just get mad and they don't want because I'm like, I'm like, is it isn't value subjective? Well, yeah. yeah. I'm like, that, that. How do you determine who benefited how much from what? I'm like, I mean, because I'm if like, we're gonna take like an objective stance, like, okay, what did you benefit from the service? Meaning that you got more out of it whether or not you liked it or not, but you got more out of it than you did, um, uh, than, you, than you put into it, right? Well, essentially, I got a lot more out of, you know, military services than I put into it, more than I could possibly imagine, um, especially if I've been affected by any kind of terrorism, <laughs> the, yeah. the, you know, any kind of blowback, because that's, that's, that's basically a service that we're getting from the state is blowback from, you know, all the military actions overseas. Or if I had a family member who died overseas, you know, the, Hey, that's a pretty big benefit. Cause he died for my freedoms and all that stuff. Right. That would make sense. But did you lose me? <laughs> no, I, 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 I started to, but I, okay. uh, no, but no, you're right. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, 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 I lost somebody because I lost multiple people because of the blowback. So yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I don't, I don't think any of these guys actually thought this stuff through. This yeah. just seems this just seems to be another one of those things that they picked up a thread of something that they read through Hop or whatever, and they twisted it to their own liking, and then they've just convinced no. themselves that it's that's like what, that's what oh, Hop yes. was arguing. And, and, and it, and it, <laughs> that's exactly what Hop was arguing. Just, yeah. yeah, and it's just it's, it's just a, it's just a buzzword. 
that you know now just net taxpayer net taxpayer and it's like and then you know the next taxpayer yeah it's like none of us are net taxpayers now what and like none of these guys like even like i said even the the in-depth conversation i've tried to have with some of these folks they they can never get around that but they they just seem to like want to sidestep it and like move forward it's like no you if we're not net taxpayers then why are we arguing yeah there's no point like Okay, Nobody so, gets anything. Okay, stupid. So, so like, let's 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 take the other position. Well, okay. Well, not everything is a benefit, right? So we can say that military action overseas is not a benefit to anybody. Okay. So then we're only talking about like, well, welfare. But if we're going to talk in terms of like what's actually good versus what's you know what's perceived good, because there's lots of people who would say like, oh yeah, our military action overseas, that's a benefit for me. There are a lot. There's most people would say that, right? Um, yeah. And a lot of people would say that, well, when I take welfare, that's that's good for me, but even though it's not. Even though if you take welfare, if yeah, you know, that actually harms you. That's actually bait on a hook. You take the money and then all of a sudden you're locked into this 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 rung on the ladder where if you take one dollar like a like a one dollar raise or a fifty cent raise and that bumps you up into that next bracket then you lose all of those services that the state provides because you're no longer eligible for those services. Yep. So lots of people will quit their job or if they have a job, they'll quit their job because they know that if they work there one more month, they're in, they have, you know, there's a mandatory raise that they have to take and then they will go get a job somewhere else where they know they're not going to get paid as much just so they can keep those benefits. Cause if they do take one more dollar, sure. That looks good on paper. I'm getting more in my, my check, but you're also losing section eight housing. You're also losing food stamps. You're also losing all these other programs that you're going to get. So is that a good for, for a person? Absolutely not. It locks them in poverty for the rest of their lives. How is that a benefit? <laughs> so yeah. Can, so basically, none of us are benefiting from services <laughs> from the state at all, especially if you drive on the roads and you hit a pothole, right? I just oh yeah, yeah. And the the more I'm thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, that's dude, actually I'm one of the worst things. I, I, I oh. there's no way you can slice this up logically and and be consistent and work out that someone is a net taxpayer, no matter what methodology you use, no matter how you try to divvy oh, up the, the portions of your responsibility of the state, uh, or how much you should owe it, be a you know, percentage of your income, or just like, you're just one person, you get one share of the responsibility, like no matter how I divvy it up, I'm just like, it's just not possible. <laughs> well, it's possible. You could like, you know, you could be a billionaire and then just go like, I'm just going to dump all my money that I know I'm going to end up spending in Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security, all that stuff. I'm just going to dump it all into the, the IRS, but that's it. And no one's doing it. So who's a net taxpayer? I want well, names. Yeah. I want names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, well, like I said, I mean, the thing that baffles me the most is, is, not, is not even that like, you know, you and I could sit here and, and well, sort of discuss this um, and, uh, you know, poke all these holes in it. But like the fact that people continue to make this argument, even after somebody points out to them, well, none of us are. So why, you know, like, but they still want to proceed with it. And I, I think it's just, I, I don't know, because it, it, it's funny. The one thing you said about, you know, there's no logical way to look at this. And that's, the, you know, that's the most hysterical thing about this, because all these motherfuckers pride themselves on being so logical. It's like, how are you missing this? Like. I was able to poke. I was able to poke like Swiss cheese. I was able to poke this thing like Swiss cheese in a matter of seconds the first time you presented it to me, and I wasn't even thinking that hard. And I'm not saying I'm not like super smart or anything, but like if I'm able to do that, you guys haven't thought this through. I, I just like to me, it just ends up being, and it it sometimes it hurts me to say this because some of these people, like you know, like I said, they're my friends and I care about them, but it's like sometimes I, I have to wonder if like if some of the uh, opponents that are the more vocal opponents of these people are really right and these motherfuckers really are just racist bastards that are looking for any fucking excuse because it's like uh, you, yeah. you have nothing here you you re and i don't want to believe that about some of my friends but it's like dude you have like there's nothing you literally have nothing here you're just throwing these words out they mean absolutely nothing well i, I don't know i don't think i don't think all of them are racist i think what they what they do is they, they they try to like oh I think this is all silly but then they start hearing that like all these ideas are coming from people like Hoppe, you know people who are big names and, the, and they're like well I can't disagree with Hoppe, you know I can't disagree with this person, 
uh, because you know if if you do, then it's you know yeah, that see, everybody kind of gets lockstep I, I like, oh, you can't Hoppa disagree with Hoppa, you can't really, disagree with no, the like, Rothbard. I, I mean, I've read some of his stuff, and I I I, I do believe. Oh, you do believe. You do believe. <laughs> Well, I guess I should talk until. Oh, I was saying, yeah, okay. I was saying, I do believe that most uh, most people um, have misread Hoppe. Uh, <laughs> most of his fanboys are not really reading what he's actually saying. I think, I mean, but I, I I find it interesting that they people like this have that, like you were talking about, like you, oh, I can't disagree with that. It's like, well, I mean, I I know Rothbard a lot better. It's like. Dude, if you follow fucking Rothbard, he changed positions multiple fucking times over the course of his fucking career. So, like, how can anybody focus on one thing that one person said and go, well, I can't disagree. I can't go against them. It's like he went against himself later yeah. in his life. You know, they all fucking do. Everybody does. You grow, you learn, you change your fucking opinions. Yep. Oh, I definitely changed my opinions from where and I You start. don't have to agree with everything everybody says, you know, even when I. I was just gonna say, even when I was even when I was a, like a huge Rothbard fan, and I just quoted Rothbard constantly. Like even then, I still disagree with a lot of stuff I came across. <laughs> but but some of the you know like like the, the whole eviction thing, you know, the, with the with the uh, with the with oh, the babe, children, the evi- you know, the ev- evicting them from the womb or whatever, like all stuff like that. And it's like, okay, I knew from the beginning I didn't agree with this guy fully. I don't understand why some of these people have to be like so hardcore. It's just like, yeah. well, he said it. It's got to be the word of God. It's you know. Oh, I remember Ben well, actually when I did uh, a couple of months ago when I did a show with Mance Raider and he brought up this uh, one one of the pieces that Rothbard had written a while ago, um, basically trashing both the left and the right and saying there was just no hope in put, putting, you know, putting it up with either of them. And it's like and, and, you, and I try to present that to some of these guys who talk about, how, oh, Rothbard tried to go against, you know, he tried to work with the left and even, you know, he said you had to give up and it's like. And it's like, and then he went, and then later in his life, he decided that, you know, he got to work with the right. I'm like, yeah. And you realize he died before he finally admitted that that was a fucking absolute yeah. God, abject failure too, right? Yeah. Uh, but they, but it's like, but if you go back, you know, what I think he wrote that, that which, I forget the name of the piece right now, by the but way, he wrote that back in like the late sixties. And it's like, he had a much different opinion. Like you gotta, yeah. which, which by uh, the way, like, um, uh, um, uh, you know, like he was trying to work with paleocons at the end of his life. Yeah. Like Pat Buchanan. And Pat Buchanan, sure, he's not the greatest guy, libertarian in the world at all. I mean, at all. But, you know, he's far more he, he would he's far more palatable than, you know, Donald Trump is uh, in terms of economics and, and libertarian ideas, for sure. Definitely. Yeah, well, Buchanan's also better. He's well now. He's more anti-war, right? He used to not. Oh be no, no, he was always anti-war. Buchanan. Oh, I, th- I thought. I mean, I know he had been for a long time. I thought like way back in the day he was, but uh, but yeah, but either, but that's I know that's I know that's the one thing about him that people you know, because I've listened to a lot of his stuff and I I remember him. I'm old enough to remember him. Like you know, well, he's running for president a bunch of times, right? Yeah. Uh, he, I mean, he's not. He's not. <laughs> yeah, he's, you're right. He's he's no saint by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> No, but he's yeah. he's he, he, does he even call himself a libertarian? Because no. I was gonna say he because I was gonna say he's actually more of a libertarian than say somebody like I don't know Bill Weld or fucking Gary Johnson <laughs> or you know like Just bake the damn cake people who actually call themselves that <laughs> and run under that banner. Yeah. So yeah, but you can and definitely. I mean, I disagree with him vehemently about a lot of things, but yeah, very anti-war and you know. Yeah, I mean Hoppe. Hoppe has, has has contributed like a lot of really good ideas, but he's also contributed like a lot of really, t- for lack of a better word, stupid ideas. <laughs> like really, just downright bad. That was one of them. The, the other one is argumentation ethics. I think is an absolute joke. I put it up there with like UPB in terms of quality of ideas. It's just it doesn't stand up to the most basic scrutiny. And people who've criticized. You know, argumentation ethics were, are not just like you know communists and socialists. Like I think the 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 most notable like critique of it was Robert Murphy. You know, from Contra Krugman. You know, yeah, Tom Woods' podcast host. Like he he's a big like uh, advocate against it. You know, mm. I think they're just really bad ideas, and they're not really completely fleshed out a lot. Of, and and Hoppe does that from time to time. Like he'll 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 contribute something that's really like really good, you know. And it is a really good kind of successor to to Rothbard. But then he then every once in a while he'll just say something ridiculous, like net taxpayer. 
Like, I don't think you thought well, yeah. this one through there. Well, that's the how, you know, a lot of his fanboys apparently think the same exact way. They, yeah. they don't, they, they get that. Like, and that, that, like I said, that, that was my first, that was my first critique. And I, I don't, you know, I, I don't think I went anywhere near in depth as Murphy, as Murphy would, but you know, like that was my first critique when it was brought to me. I was just like, you guys haven't thought this through, have you? No. Like, you know, I, I, I have found myself um, ever since like, you know, the, you know, whatever the so-called rise of the alt-right, at least within the libertarian circles and everything um, and like, and Trump and everything. Like I have found myself saying the phrase, you guys are disconnected from reality more often than I ever thought I would, because that's one of those things that used to get, you know, that used to get thrown at me when I first became a libertarian and an anarchist, you know, that's something we, you know, people hear all the time. Oh, you don't live in the real world. We live in the real world. You can't have this stuff. Utopian, blah, 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 blah. But now I've turned around and had to say it to these people. Cause I'm like, dude, you, you guys really are disconnected. Like now I understand why that stereotype of us got started because listen to your fucking selves you have these you have these half-baked fucking ideas that sound great on uh, on guess what ironically they sound wonderful on fucking paper isn't that one of your critiques of communism all the time oh yeah sounds great on paper but i'm like you're fu you're doing the same fucking thing <laughs> like mm -hmm. you have an idea it sounds good and despite claiming to be the more logical individuals and the people who think things through, you just like grasp onto it, grasp onto it. And I really, I really think it all boils down to, um, like I said, I, I think a lot of it is maybe there is, you know, more bigotry, racism, whatever. I don't know that's buried under there, but I think a lot of it is just, especially when it comes to like this particular subject, um, you know, coming from it's something that you know they 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 gleaned off of Hoppe. It, it really seems to me that a lot of these folks are just are still stuck on despite how logical they claim to be like the great man fallacy is their is their favorite yeah. thing to go to at all times. They just they still need that fucking great man, you know, and there it, are it's no just great men. No, there's not. And it just, you know, they I, I really think that's what it is, because I mean, you, you even see it with the all the people that turn it, you know, to the whole. Oh, we we have to we have to help Trump win because as long as it's not Hillary, and then they started buying a lot of his bullshit, like and trying to be like, well, look, look, look at all the good stuff he's doing. It's like, dude, you're falling right into it again. Stop. Well, Hitler made the train run on time. None of these people are our savior. <laughs> not even not 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 even Hoppe. All right, fuck it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Rothbard definitely made a lot of mistakes. Uh, I think Hoppe made a lot more mistakes. Uh, well. Rothbard made a lot more tactical mistakes. <laughs> Hoppe made a lot more intellectual mistakes. Um, Molyneux is just a mistake. Uh, <laughs> from the ground up, it's just a giant mistake. Um, Seamus was a mistake, but no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. Um, yeah, it's all right. No. Seamus is great. I'm just messing with him. Um, MK is a mistake. No. Uh, <laughs> incoming hate mail and fan letters. Um, yeah, I, just, I mean, yeah. It, 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 someone someone commented on one of my YouTube videos uh, from... Yeah. Whoa. 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 Oh, what? 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 Yep. What? What? So, yeah, someone commented on one of my YouTube videos and... That's when I was really like, you know what? I've I've heard this and I, I keep hearing this. I don't think there is a night taxpayer. And I was driving, and uh, uh, you know, and and then it then it like dawned on me like, no, they're just it just I don't think it's possible unless you really dedicated billions of dollars, you know, if you made millions of billions of dollars uh, through other means and then just decided to pay off all of your quote unquote debt to the to state, local, and federal governments. You know, and you dedicated that money just to doing that, just just so you can pay off your quote unquote fair share. I don't think it's entirely possible, considering that like the ballooned cost of healthcare uh, that you're going to end up having to pay when you get when you get older, and you're going to end up taking things like Medicare and Medicaid because it's not. You'd be insane not to take Medicaid and Medicare when you get older. You it'd, it'd be insane because it would it would put you and your family like in financial hell forever just just because of the balloon uh cost of of uh senior care like it it would, it would be insane oh, yeah. for you to not Absolutely. take it you know and the, and the and the financial 
havoc that would wreak on your family if you didn't. It would just be insane. Just knowing that 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 is going to end up going to be like the final bit of your life. That there's no way that you could you could possibly walk away from that as a net taxpayer, for sure. No, exactly. Yeah. And you know, like you said before, I mean, use any of these examples. Yeah, unless you're the fucking billionaire who literally has nothing else to spend that money on and can keep dumping it in there, it's not possible. And not, it's not even the fact that nobody's doing it now. That that's not something that anybody would do anyway. Yeah, you didn't say as much. As, as much as I, these days, as much as I try to stay away from absolutes at like all fucking costs, I, I like, that's one of those things that I think, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think you're right. I don't think we can get around. And, um, you know, like I said earlier, I, I've had this discussion a bunch of times, but I didn't even think about it. I, I don't even think I, I took it as far as you did only cause I didn't have to, cause I just kept, I kept running. I, I was able to run up, you know, put up brick walls in front of these idiots anyway. And they kept running into them. So I didn't think, I didn't even have to, I didn't have to take it further than that. But when you really think about it, yeah, man, there, there is no way. And if, 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 so if there is no possible way to be a net taxpayer, then that entire argument blows up. And I really wish they would find a new one. Um, to at least entertain us for a little while. Right? <laughs> Another equally bad idea that we can we can play around with for a while. But yeah, someone commented. Yeah, so, what, yeah, it was it was a comment on on a YouTube video that I did about Cantwell when Cantwell used to advocate for killing cops, and I was like, well, if if your whole point is like you're using state services and your you know your 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 activities demand that more people get stolen from then can't will drives on the roads. So we should shoot them because that decreases demand for, for more work on the roads. Right. Even if it's just a little bit, you know, um, if we're just going to make it as a, as a, as an axiom, right. Is that if, you know, if you, if you, if you use, if you benefit from any kind of government services, period, uh, that would require other people to get stolen from then. Yeah. Can't well should be shot. So should everybody else though. <laughs> Which, by the way, I'm not advocating someone shoot Cantwell. I'm not saying that. Let me just make that clear. <clears throat> but if that's the argument to to kill cops is because they're doing that, then then you have to also take the position that Cantwell should be shot too. But I don't even think he holds that position anymore because now he's kind of a cop licker, I guess, boot licker. Oh, did we lose Jeremy? I think we lost Jeremy. I'm here. Okay. Been here. I just I couldn't hear you for the longest time. I heard all the background noises you made, but I couldn't hear any of your talking. <laughs> well, that's because I wasn't talking. I was waiting for you to say something. Oh. Yeah. We had some disconnect. Well, I, I also wanted to keep it quiet so I know where to cut. Is when you first mentioned Cantwell a while back, and then you just dropped out completely. Oh, yeah. Well, Cantwell's not important, so you, you didn't miss anything. Anytime you've, anytime you've vaped. Or, uh... <laughs> I, I can hear all quit that. vaping at any time. Good times, yeah. good times. Yeah. So tell me about Action Park. <laughs> Speaking of stupid shit. What? <laughs> <laughs> you said that oh, you went to Action Park so bad. <laughs> growing up. <laughs> oh. were, you, were you asking about me, Jim? Because I don't even, I can't even hear you. Yeah. Just tell me about Action Park. Until oh, Action oh Action Park, yeah. Uh, I miss that place. Uh, I, I mean, they shut that down years ago, didn't they? I don't know. I haven't been back there. But they yeah, tried Action reopening Park was wonderful. it. It was one of those places yeah. where they, you know, they had all sorts of, uh, you know, they had water rides. And um, uh, the, the, one, the one thing I remember the most about that place was the, what the hell was that thing called? It was like the it was like the bobsled thing that you did the, the loose alpine or whatever slide. it was. You sat down in that little um, sled and shot down the uh, concrete half pipe or whatever <laughs> it was, and like alpine I, I remember, slide. Like, you almost almost every time you were, yeah, the alpine slide. That's what it was. Um, you know, you were sure to end up with like the you know a rug burn times a million um anytime you even slid off that thing a, a little bit and like so many people used to get i think they had to shut that down because so many people would get ejected from it I think, yeah two people and died just launch think, off of it yeah two people and, died uh, on it that's what i remember most about that place it was, it was sh as, as much fun as it was it was shut down repeatedly because people kept like getting really badly injured on different things i don't know why but it's not showing up that i'm talking this is bizarre 
Damn you. Uh, no, this, this, but, is, this is Discord's fault. This is all Discord's fault. All right, let's see. And I'm actually going to leave this edit out. I'm actually not going to edit this part. There we go. Let's try disconnecting and then reconnecting again. All right. Damn it. Turn green. 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 Can you hear me? I can hear you right now. Uh, what is with this thing? <laughs> Because it looks, because it, I mean, it's normally when I'm supposed to talk, it's supposed, my little thing is supposed to turn green and I had it always on, but it's never green, but you can hear me though, right? Right now I can hear you. Okay. So yeah, apparently like a, a couple of people died on the Alpine slide. Like one, one kid that was like 19 flew off of it and cracked his head open and died. Um, yeah, like a bunch of people died. Uh, then they had, then you had the the wave pull that they had cranked to eleven, and of course there was no salt in the water, so it made it even harder to swim in it because you were less buoyant, and people yep. were drowning in that thing. Um, you know, good, clean, wholesome American fun uh, before the helicopter came around. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I saw. I. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, yeah, no, yeah, that's what I was gonna say before. I mean, so many people like it was, it was, it was a bunch of. Them. I think people even died on the. Uh, they used to have that one thing Tarzan. that was half what. That was no, yeah, well, that yeah, they're, they're, I think I think people died on pretty much every ride, but there was that one thing they had. Uh, it was like halfway up the mountain, and it was you passed it as you went down the alpine slide, but it was one of those things where. Uh, you can turn the uh, like they turn the air on, and you can get you put the little suit on, and you can get blown up in the air and stuff like that. You can do all the different flips and tricks. People died on that fucking thing too because the air would like shoot up to like a thought, like it would like crank itself up, and like people would get shot up and over the over the whole padded system and out into the woods. People got caught in trees and shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, the place was a fucking death trap, but man, it was fun as fucking hell as a kid. I remember that. <laughs> Uh, what was the other? We had the Tarzan swing. That was the one where you swung out like Tarzan on a rope, and then you jumped out and you went into the pool. But the pool yep. wasn't really a pool. It was uh, it was like a little lake that was that got its water from a spring, and spring water is like super super fucking cold. So people would go in, like get into the water, and then like get shocked by the coldness of the water, and then they couldn't swim and they would drown. Um, yeah, incident hypothermia. Yeah, <laughs> and then like, and then and on top of that, people were like, like girl, like dudes would pull down their pants, or like chicks would lift up their tops. So like, in front of all these kids, <laughs> was just, and nobody cared because everybody was high or drunk. Like all all the lifeguards were high and drunk. But I saw this movie called. Well, I was waiting for this movie to come out called Action Point, which is supposed to be about that, and it stars Johnny Knoxville. So it's got a lot of like jackass stunts you know like he actually goes down the alpine slide and beefs it and gets a concussion um which there were some funny parts in it but it was just not funny it was just it was just it was a terrible movie and they tried to paint action park as like oh we're making these parks we're making these rides as dangerous as possible and like we're trying to hurt people which was not the point of action park the point of action park was like you were in control of the rides and yeah because you're in control you know there's there's risks to it and it was just it was just, it not only was it insulting it wasn't funny the story you didn't care about it nothing it was just bad and some of the like the the stunts or whatever weren't funny because of like a like jackass the reason why jackass was funny in a lot of cases was like you're seeing people get injured but then you're also laughing at the response that the unsuspecting public is having on those stunts which you don't get because they're all they're all actors in the movie. It was terrible. <laughs> I was so anticipating this thing to be great and that because Bad Santa or not Bad Santa. Well, Bad Santa is great, but Bad Grandpa was was amazing too. But again, like those were also playing off of you know, just people walking around in public seeing this old guy get, you know, pummeled by something and then just them going like in shock like, "Oh my god, are you okay?" Um which you didn't get with this movie, and it was just it was just bad. So that yeah, this was my um, this was my The Last Jedi. Uh, <laughs> Everybody you know, was I, so disappointed with that one, and I was like, yeah, it's I've, fine. But this one, this I, one disappointed me. I, I I've 
You know, speaking of that, I finally saw The Last Jedi, and I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> I don't know what everybody's bitching about. But it ruined your childhood. <laughs> no. You just don't no, know no. it yet. Yeah. That, 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 that must be what it is. There's a lot of really bad parts of that movie. Like, when she... <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of bad parts of that movie, but I thought it was I thought it was enjoyable. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't put it up there as my you know I mean I I'm not gonna go full out like. Well, apparently, apparently your your internet went full out. Um, <laughs> he people like wait because really as an oh, opinion about that's interesting. Hmm. Ah, shot. I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> Jeremy, I think we're going to have to wrap this one up. Your internet's terrible. <laughs> my, my internet is actually fine. I don't know what... Uh-huh. I, I've... <laughs> the Wi-Fi thing. I think it's Discord. It, it, it may Yesterday actually on... be Discord. Yeah, this, yes, is, this isn't this isn't going to happen. So, it's anyways, yes, in summary, while while we wait for a, a moment of clarity from Discord, I'll just say uh, there's no such thing as a net taxpayer, and anybody who does probably yes. liked Action Point, and uh, <laughs> and yeah. So, where could they find more of your stuff, Jeremy? Hopefully, it'll work long enough for you to. Well, if if people can actually hear this, there we go. Um, yeah, the we best can. place to find my stuff these days, the best stuff to find my stuff these days is actually Steam it, because that's where all my stuff goes first. And I'm putting a hell of a lot of content up there right now. So, steamit.com slash at abolitionist J. Um, still doing podcast. SOL podcast. If you want. Oh, I'll, I'll say that. SOL podcast.org. Is it all worked until you said SOL podcast.org? <laughs> So you got like three times that it was said. Anyways, thanks for coming on, Jeremy. Uh, hopefully I can get a Hail Satan out of you before your internet cuts well, off again. Hail Satan. Look, like that, sort, that worked. It worked enough. <laughs> right, I'll talk to you later, man. <laughs> we'll try again some other time. <laughs> All right, man. Take it easy. <laughs>